No, you're, it's not. It's not in my way. How's that? Good morning and welcome everyone today. Let us start with singing Holy Ground, if you would all stand, singing hymn 101, all verses. Please join with me in our opening prayer and praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given to us. We ask for prayers for all those that are in need in this world that we live in today, the things that go on in Ukraine. We stand united in their beliefs in a free world. We ask that you pray for those that are trying to stop this terrible act from happening. We ask that you be with those that are in need in our locale. Help those that are suffering inside with pain and anguish. We ask now that you help us to enjoy this daily worship and this praise in your name with music and words. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Continuing standing on the promises, hymn number 452, verses 1, 2, and 4.
this time of prayer, we have a few requests that have been mentioned uh, this morning. So it was mentioned in Sunday school, so we will look over those. Um, we need to be especially in prayer for uh, Bill Hunsucker. Um, just some things going on in his life right now. Um, he's asking for prayer that he can be at peace uh, in his life and what he's dealing with. So uh, we need to make sure to do that. Um, Tabitha Criminger is in labor currently, so we need to be praying for uh, for health for mother and child uh, as they're going through that right now. Um, keep uh, Pat Starr in prayer as she's uh, getting better physically as she has gout, and we haven't seen her in a little while, so we need to be uh, continuing to pray for her as she is uh, recovering and healing from, from the gout. Um, Angie's mom still has an infection, so still keep her in our prayers this week um, that she will be able to get rid of the infection, that she'll be able to uh, finish her recovery. Um, and I have one. Uh, my grandfather will be having uh, open heart surgery. This will be his third open heart surgery a week from Monday. So his name's Bob Rash. So if we could uh, keep, keep my family in prayer for next Monday, that would be wonderful. Uh, we have some praises. Um, Jason Munns, who's been on our prayer list uh, at different times for, uh, for a while, uh, he had, uh, if you'll remember, he had a bunch of burns, uh, and he was at prayer meeting Tuesday night and is recovering very well, so a uh, huge answer to prayer for that, for Jason. Um, and we have new great-grandparents in our midst, and the, the Killians had a new great-granddaughter, so that's a huge praise that we have for them. <laughs> So, lots of praise, lots of good things happening here in the church. Yes, yes. Um, yep, yeah, Hunter starts full time at Hoosier Christian Village this week, so that's a huge praise. I asked him how it was to be an adult, and he said, "I'll tell you later." So, be praying for him as he becomes, as he gets there. So, huge praise there. It's wonderful to hear things going on in the church. So. All right, if not, if there's nothing else, let's go to God in prayer at this time, and let's thank him for all the things he's given to us. Uh, Father, we are so grateful that we can see you at work uh, here in, in our individual lives and here in the lives, uh, here in the life of Valonia Christian Church. God, it's so heartwarming to hear of the stories of, of you working, and we see, we see you continually at work. Uh, for the praises that have been mentioned this morning and for the praises that we're just thinking about this morning, Father. Uh, I ask that you, I thank you for them, and I ask that you would continue to bless to bless us and continue to look after us. Um, God, for the prayer requests that have been mentioned this morning, uh, for the sickness, for the infections, for the up upcoming surgeries, um, Father, I ask that you would be with each and every situation you know the situation better than we ever could, God, and we thank you for being, you know, for the great physician and for the relationship we have with him, that we can bring everything to you and that we can lay it down at your feet, God, because that is an awesome, awesome thing that we have in this relationship with you. Father, as we continue to go through this service, as we can come around the table, as we dive into your word, I ask God that you would fill this place with your presence and that we will focus on you, our Lord and Savior, with all of our heart and our mind. And it's in your Son, Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. As we prepare for a time of communion, let us join together singing the first and last verse of hymn 314, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Good morning. As usual, when I started to look for something to share this morning, I was at a loss. And uh, the thought came to me, not my own, but the uh, thought came to me, pastor is preaching on unity, so why not say something about unity? And so I got out my devotional books and various things that I use for resource and couldn't find anything. So the thought came, go to the book. So I looked up some scriptures, which I will share. Uh, 1 John 17, 22, and 23 says, and I read, if I can find it. I'm going to start at verse 20, actually. This is Jesus praying to the Father, and I quote, he says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me. Father, I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And then over in Ephesians 4, 5 and 6, It says, There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all and living through all. Therefore, we are one in Jesus. Now, he mentions one baptism, and there are different types of baptism, which we all may be familiar with. We here at Philonia Christian Church believe in immersion. Some churches do sprinkling. Some do pouring water over their head. But these are only symbols, symbols of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And each person must choose for themselves which type of baptism they would prefer. And so it is with communion. There are different types of communion. Uh, some churches share a common cup. People come to the altar, they pass one cup down the row, everyone takes a sip. Uh, we do individual servings, probably more important since the COVID problem. And then other churches the bread is dipped in the wine and passed out to the people as they come by. Now these are all types of communion and they're all symbols of the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, now some churches, not ours, some churches believe that the actual wine, once it is blessed or consecrated, uh, becomes the actual blood and the bread becomes the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but however you believe about communion, and like I say, there are all different things that people believe, uh, all based on their own background, their own upbringing. This is a good. But communion unites us all as a church. Every Christian church, Christian I put in quotes, throughout history has celebrated several different sacraments, uh, marriage, baptism, communion, and so we continue to commun celebrate communion today because it unites us as a church. We're united in the Lord Jesus Christ and we celebrate his death and resurrection. This is worldwide. There's actually uh, 
a worldwide communion Sunday. Some churches practice communion every week like we do. Some practice communion once a month. But on worldwide communion Sunday, all churches across the world participate in communion, again, as a symbol of our unity. This was given to us by the Lord because he wants us to be unified. He wants us to be one body, one people. We are all one in him, no matter what our individual beliefs might be or how we feel about different things, baptism, communion, or whatever. And we at Bologna Christian Church have what we call open communion. Anyone who is a baptized believer is welcome to participate in communion with us on Sunday morning. You don't have to be a member of our church or any other church. If you're a believer, you're a member of God's church, universal. Let's take this time, I'll offer a short prayer, and then participate in communion. Make sure that things are right between you and your Lord as you participate. Let us pray. Father God, truly we thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you give us each day. We thank you, Lord, for these sacraments that you have given us to remind us of how we should live and what we should do. We ask that you would bless us, each one, according to our needs as we participate in the sacrament of communion this day. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Jennifer. That was beautiful. I dreamed I went to heaven And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing And someone called your name You turned and saw this young man And he was smiling as he came and he said, friend, you may not know me now And then he said, but wait You used to teach my Sunday school When I was only eight And every week you would say a prayer Before the class would start And one day when you said that prayer I asked Jesus in my heart Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Then another man stood before you And said remember the time A missionary came to your church And his pictures made you cry You didn't have much money But you gave it anyway Jesus took the gift you gave And that's why I'm here today Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed Thank you for giving Lord, I am so glad you gave. One by one they came, far as the eyes could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done. Sacrifices made Unnoticed on the earth In heaven now proclaimed And I know that up in heaven You're not supposed to cry But I am almost sure There were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord He said, my child, look around you For great is your reward Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Thank you for giving to the Lord I am alive that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave
I am so glad you So Robert looked at me after communion time. He looked at me and told me, he said, between, the two, between these two, between Wayne and Hunter, he said, good luck following that. I'll pray for you. So, it is a, it's time for us to talk about unity part two. Well, Wayne said I preached on unity last week. Uh, And I explained last week, this is part of us leading up into the Easter season. You know, this is now Easter season. And part of how we prepare for Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is we become unified as a body here in Christ at Valonia Christian Church. If you'll remember from last week, our theme verse, I've got a theme verse, I guess you would say, uh, about unity comes from the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 2, uh, we're going to start with verse, verse 43 and go through 45 where it says this, Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. So we're going to see, we see the early church, we see the unity that they have. We see the unity that they have in worship, but also outside of worship as well. In their daily lives, they met together every day, they had everything in common, and they did everything for the common good of the believers at that time. So I think there's some great examples that we have from from the early church, from that group of disciples that we read about in Acts And today is going to be a hard day for us. I'm just going to be honest. The next 15 minutes are going to get uncomfortable. So if you need to squirm in your seat, it's fine. We're we're going to be there. Uh, Because I know it's uncomfortable for me to stand up here and preach it. So it's going to be uncomfortable for you to hear it. We're going to talk about a couple of different words today. And kind of what the Bible talks about. We're going to really work work on this. Because I feel like these two words... The either doing them or the lack of doing them really affects how we unify as a church body or even how we have relationships with others. Uh, the first word that we're going to talk about, now don't turn your ears off when I hear it, when you hear the word. The first word we're going to talk about is judgment. I read the story, uh, there was a little boy one time that ran to his mom and he was so excited. He had, he had just measured himself and he told her, Mom, I'm six feet tall. The mom was extremely skeptical and she asked him to measure himself again while she watched because there was no way he was six foot tall. Well, she discovered that the problem when the boy took out not a standard 12-inch ruler but a six-inch ruler and he measured himself that he was six ruler lengths tall. He had the right idea, but he had the wrong ruler. And he had the wrong standard. And sometimes we often fall into uh, the same problem in a different way. A lot of times we often judge ourselves by the short ruler and judge other people by the tall ruler. We tend to, at times, as people, as individuals, we tend to judge ourselves by our intentions rather than our actions. We tend to look at everything kind of skewed in our direction. And by doing that, we we kind of miss the point. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, where we're going to be at for a moment. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, where it says this, and I'm going to read it in the New American Standard Version first. 
It says, do not judge so that you will, will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by the standard of measure, it will measure to you. Why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, and behold, there's a log still in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, I feel confident that we all at some point in time or another have heard the saying, uh, take the log out of your own eye before you worry about your neighbor's eye. And if you didn't, we had completely different upbringings. I'm just going to say that right now. We had different upbringings if you've not heard that, heard that saying. But as people, it's so easy, isn't it, to fall into the trap of judging. Let's just be honest with ourselves. You don't have to be honest with anybody else but yourself. But it's so easy to fall into that trap. It's so easy to look at somebody and, well, I would never do that. Or to go over here and say, well, do you see how they are, how they're acting? And it's easy to fall into that judgment trap. It's easy to fall into a trap of judging people based on what you would do instead of the situation. Or instead of looking at them in the way God our Father does. I want to now read the same group of verses, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5, but I want to read it out of the message version. Uh, the message version, I like a lot of things because it makes, when I read the message in comparison to something else, it makes me think a little different. So when I read this, I really liked this and I wanted, wanted to share it with you guys. So Matthew 7, 1 through 5 from the message version. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, or criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer that's on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is distorted by contempt? Is this whole traveling roadshow mentality, it is this whole traveling roadshow mentality all over again? playing a holier-than-thou part instead of just living your part. Wipe that ugly sneer off of your own face, and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that kind of hits me right in the face, and it makes me kind of cringe in my seat a little bit, because um, that's really blunt. Let's just be honest. That's really blunt the way they put that. But I really like it because... It kind of calls us out where, we're, where we tend to go to as humans. And I really like the opening of this. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, or criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Now, I don't think anybody wants that treatment, do we? I mean, am I, does somebody like, the, like to be criticized? I don't think so. Okay, we're good. Um, we don't like that stuff. We don't like having people judge us. We don't like being criticized by a standard that we feel like is too high to even think about meeting. We don't like that. That's not something that is enjoyable for us. In fact, that whole attitude and concept there probably has cost us a lot of relationships, a lot of friendships, and maybe even lost us relationships with our family members. Maybe it's lost us relationships with people in our church. Maybe it's lost us more than that. It's easy to fall into that, that trap of being judgy. But we have to remember how God looks at each individual person. So we're going to move on and come back to that word there towards the end. We're going to come back to it. Um, the second word, it's a little bit easier we're going to talk about. The second word we're going to look at today is the word forgiveness. The word forgiveness. I heard the story one time of an African woman who had given her heart to Jesus. Her husband was the chief of a Zulu tribe. And when she had told him what she had done, the chief beat her brutally. And she was lying on the floor bleeding. The man mocked at her and said, Now, what can your Jesus do for you now? 
the woman who was lying there, picked herself up, and with tears in her eyes, she said, He can help me to forgive you. He can help me to forgive you. I kind of find forgiveness and, judge, and judgment or judging, they're kind of two polar opposites, but they really are a big part of our lives as individuals. I see that they're opposite actions, but they're such a huge part of our lives and a huge part of our walk with Christ if we let it be, if we, if we don't let, them, let these things get in the way. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 13 is where we're going to look at for talking about forgiveness. And I'm going to read again out of the New American Standard first. It says, Bearing one another, with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, if somebody forgives you, you should forgive them in the same way. We need to forgive them in the same way that God has forgiven us. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Now we're going to go look at the message version. And we're going to read the message version. And I'm actually going to read a little bit more. I'm going to start in verse 12 and run through verse 14 in the message. So... Chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God has picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength and discipline. And be even tempered and content with second place. Be quick to forgive an offense and forgive, uh, and forgive as quickly and completely as the Master has forgiven you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment and never be without it. Forgiveness, though. Forgive as quickly and as completely as the Master has forgiven you. This might sound like a Sunday school answer, but God has forgiven all of us no matter what we've done. Correct? I mean, we can all agree on that. God has forgiven it, and it says He has taken it as far as the east is from the west. He has forgotten about it. He has forgiven every wrongdoing that we have ever done. And it says to forgive as quickly and as completely as the Master has. Now let's think about that for a second and go, okay, that's hard, right? It's hard to sit there when our feelings have been hurt, when somebody has purposefully taken advantage of us. It's hard for us to then, as soon as they say sorry, to then be able to say, okay, you're forgiven, and to move on and move past it. It's a hard thing for us to do. It's a hard thing to do. And forgiveness by itself is not, not an easy thing for us to do. We might say it is. It sounds good. In Sunday school, it sounds really good to say yes, Forgiveness is great and forgiveness is what we need to do. It's easy when talking to your buddies or your friends, it's easy to say, well, I can forgive them. But in our hearts, down where nobody else can see, is it that easy? Is it that easy when we get down to, in our hearts, to forgive someone who has wronged you? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it's very challenging when someone in our lives may have wronged us and we need to forgive them and that person's asked us for forgiveness. I think it's also very hard to forgive somebody that did you wrong on purpose, that purposely did something to harm you, either emotionally or physically or in any way there, and then comes and asks for forgiveness. I think that's extremely hard for us to do, for us to forgive and for, to move on. And then we get to the hardest one of them all. It becomes even harder to forgive someone who has done something on purpose to you and doesn't see anything wrong with it. It becomes even harder when somebody does something wrong to you and doesn't see anything wrong with it. And then we harbor that in our hearts. Now, I think that if we're honest with ourselves, we've probably all been in every one of those three scenarios with forgiveness. I think we have. And I don't know how you're doing with, your, with forgiveness in your life right now. 
But this might be a wake-up call that God's giving you that we need to do that so we can be a unified body here at Valonia. Because when we don't forgive and when we harbor that, when we harbor those feelings, it turns into bitterness and it turns into all these other things that keep us from being united, that keep us from the best life that God has has allowed us to be to have with Him and our relationship with Him. Forgiveness is so important to unity. Forgiveness is so important to unity. I don't know, you don't have to raise your hands, I'm just making the statement here, but last week I asked everybody to commit to reading Acts 2 every day this week, to think about unity, for us to be united in something that we were doing as a church body here at Bologna Christian Church. Now this week I'm asking for you to commit to something different this week. I'm asking for each and every one of us to write down two names somewhere where we will remember to pray for them every day, or remember, the, remember them every day. The first name that I want you to write down, and this is something you have to, you have to discover. First, I want you to write down the name of someone that you may have judged or that you may have judged a situation too harsh. And I want you to pray for that situation or that individual. I want you to pray for that person. The second one is I want you to write down the name of someone that you need to forgive. I'm not going to be naive and say that we all don't have somebody that we need to forgive in our lives. Because I'm sure that we do. And I want you this week, as you go through your week, I want you to commit to doing this with all of us. And I want us all to be praying for that person that we need to forgive. So that way God can help us to forgive that person. So, somebody, that we, somebody or a situation that we may have judged too harshly. And somebody that we need to forgive. And I want us to commit to praying for those people every day. So put it in your car, put it on your desk at work, put it somewhere where you can be reminded of that. But I want us to work on that this week. To work on, to work on these in our hearts so that way we can, we can become more unified as a body of believers here at Valonia Christian Church. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning, uh, the examples that we have, uh, the example that Jesus has given to us. And Father, as we keep looking at this word unity, as we keep looking at all the ways we need to continue to, be, to unify here at Valonia Christian Church, um, and the way we can help our individual walks with you, God. I ask that you would help us as we commit to praying for these two names this week, that you would help remind us to pray for them, that you would help us work through the situations, because God, you know them better than we ever, than we ever could, and you know the person that's been laid on each and every individual's heart this morning. God, we thank you so much for your involvement in our lives, the continuing to show that you care every single day. And Father, as we continue to praise you and then as we, continue, as we leave out of this building, continue to be with us. And it is in your Son, Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We're now entering into our time of invitation. If you have a decision to make for Jesus this morning, then this is that time for you to come forward if you just need prayer, this is another time. Come forward. I'll be more than happy to pray with you. Other elders here will be more than happy to pray for you as well. But this is also a time where you get to sit, where you get to stand in your seat and you get to worship the God who forgave you, who forgave you and has given you a relationship with Him. So as we stand and as we sing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, first and last," hymn number 679. Let's think about that as we worship our Lord and Savior this morning. "'Tis so sweet to trust
All right. We have quite a few events coming up in the life of the church we want to remind you guys about. Um, choir practice will be this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, there will be prayer meeting here Tuesday night in the classroom with Jay at, at 7 o'clock. So please be in attendance for that. It's a great time. Teen group will be tonight, 4 to 6, downstairs in the Old Fellowship Hall. So that's exciting. Um, also, we want you guys to mark your calendars. We're hoping you guys don't, don't have a whole lot of plans here coming up real soon. Uh, March the 26th, we are going to have a cleaning day here at church. Um, we've got some projects coming up. We really need to get a few areas deep cleaned. So we're going to have a little bit of a cleaning day that day. Uh, we don't know times yet. Just put it on your calendar. And then the first two sat one of the two, or maybe even both of the Saturday, first Saturdays in April, we're going to have a little bit of a work day. We've got some exciting things coming up for our building, and we're doing some maintenance on it that it's needed. So if you would, please mark your calendars. We will have more information later, but we know everybody's busy. We want to get that out there ahead of time. Um, yes. Okay, this Thursday, who, who's your Christian volunteer day? What time is that? 8.15. Okay. And the fifth Thursday as well. So, okay, awesome. So if you would like to be to volunteer and help out Hoosier Christian Village, uh, make sure to make note of that or see Anita, I guess, if you if you got other questions. And Barb? Okay, sweet. So we'd love to have some more volunteers for that. All right. Well, then let's go to God in prayer as we close out our wonderful time together. Father God, we are so grateful uh, this morning that we have been able to be in your house and worship you. And Father, that we've been able to feel your presence here this morning. Father, we are just so grateful for the relationship that we have with you. That you uh, know us by name. That you want the best things in life for each and every one of us uh, as we embark on this journey to grow closer to you. Father, as we depart from this place, as we go back into our regular lives, uh, God, I ask that you would help protect and guide each and every individual that's here this morning. That, Father, that throughout this week they'll be able to withstand whatever trials come their way. But also, God, that they will be able to grow closer to you this week. And that when they come back next Sunday, they will be be ready to be refreshed and renewed in your word. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us each and every day, especially the things that we cannot see. And it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.